Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and this time I'm going to be playing in the Tier 9 Soviet light tank, the T-54 Lightweight, although it's only really lightweight by name, not by nature, because I believe this is the heaviest light tank in the game. It used to be the Panzer Panther, right? Wargaming totally bring that back. You, you know I'm a, I'm a complete advocate for that old Tier 7 German premium light tank, and I'm sure it'd be even more special in the game now, right, with the new matchmaking changes. But I think... This vehicle just pips the WZ-1321, that tier 10 Chinese light tank. And while the Chinese light tank has better turret armor than the T-54, this vehicle is a whole tier lower and it's still about 80% as good. But this vehicle has way better hull armor than the tier 10 Chinese light tank. This thing has 80 millimeters of armor at the front and 60 millimeters at the side. And that can be utterly fantastic because it means that you can side scrape in a light tank. Most light tanks, when you side scrape, and have about 20 or 30 millimeters of armor, will get overmatched by large caliber guns, especially at high tier with the three caliber rule, i.e. if the caliber of the gun that hits you is over three times the nominal thickness of the tank, then it will automatically go in, irrelevant of how well angled you were. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about right here. I'm going to be side scraping the CDC. We ricochet his shot, and so that means we can get him to pull back behind the ridge and now hopefully hold position over him. And that CDC isn't doing too well. It feels pretty nice to be in a tier 9 light tank and be able to fight it out with a tier 8 medium. And so if that's your kind of thing, then look no further than the T-54 lightweight. Now Cliff, I have seen some magical games on this map when people make use of the hill and that's why I felt it was so important to be able to go up here because you can just shoot down on your opponents from above and you just are so safe and if they turn and they aim their way up at you they're still having to engage your armor probably at its most effective whereas you're shooting down on them and many vehicles don't even have the gun elevation to be able to shoot up at you especially if they do hug the cliff here or hug the mountain, I guess, because that's the cliff down there. What are you talking about? Or the cliff edge, I guess. The mountain edge! Mountain edge, as we're going to talk about it. Oh, Mr. CDC, that wasn't quite so clever, was it? Looks like you're going to have to re-roll your account again, buddy. I'm only joking, only joking. But yeah, if you manage to use these positions here, especially in a tank that does have gun depression, I think I've got a fantastic replay of the Comet with its 12 degrees. I think the replay is called Mountain Goat. Then you can just absolutely rock and roll here and pick up some incredible high damage games. I go forwards in my lightweight. Looks like the 5120 actually spotted me there, but he's only probably about 300 meters away from me, so that's not really a surprise. Even though I do have pretty darn good camera rating in this vehicle on the move, which is the light tank class speciality, he's still able to spot me at 332. So either he's using coated optics, maybe binoculars, I guess it could have been something else, possibly. Oh, but all that really matters is that 5120 misses me, and I certainly didn't miss him as I put in my second round, and now he is a 50-50 whether I'm going to be able to take him out. So I'm going to fire one blind here. Will we kill him, or do I not fire blind? Well, I actually decided not to, and in retrospect, that's a pretty darn good idea, because every time you fire, you totally sacrifice the camera rating of your light tanks. And when there are going to be tank destroyers sitting around at the back here, then you don't want to be doing that unless you feel like you've got a good chance of penetrating the enemy vehicle. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case here, and we don't go through the IS-3. And I count myself lucky that the T-28 prototype, the Scorpion, and also, I guess, the UDES on the enemy team doesn't manage to spot me. Got to fire for this, though. Secure the kill. Nice, easy shot there. And one thing that's really nice about the T-54 Lightweight is that I believe they might have increased the the shell velocity because the standard rounds on this vehicle are now APCR. The shell velocity is 1050 meters a second. That's not fantastic, but it's certainly not all that bad. Now you might be asking what else has changed about this tank as they've moved it up from tier 8 up to tier 9. Well, the DPM has gone up a little bit. The pen on the standard rounds has gone up significantly from 175 to 208. And so that just makes me feel so much more confident when engaging opponents with reasonable armor. Look at that. That UDES, if he's using the top gun, has 308 millimeters of pen, or is it 288? I think it's 288, and it's when you go up to tier 9 in the tier 10 Swedish tank destroyers, you get 308, and he bounced off my turret. Absolutely beautiful stuff there, something that other light tanks would not be capable of. But of course, you do have to make sacrifices, and usually a lot of that is the size of the tank, and you're a much bigger target to be able to hit. 
but I'm not going to care about that right now. We're going down after this tier 9 Chinese light tank, the WZ132A. He misses me, I don't miss him, and the reason why I've pushed so aggressively right now is because I thought that my team were in an absolute state right now, that they weren't going to be able to finish this off. Now this is a very important moment of the game. Even though my engine is damaged, I choose to repair my tracks, and I'm pretty chuffed about that. That's something that you could only really do in 918 so decisively, or should we say so confidently without then having to deal with the fact that you have to spend the remainder of the game without an engine. Now with Wargaming's rechargeable consumables, I can just wait, I guess, for the 90 seconds to be able to go back into this game. If 90 seconds go away, there's still like seven and a half minutes left on this game to play, this that certainly isn't too bad. And it does mean that I'm not sure if Wargaming really wanted this, but I'd say that large repair kits are less useful than they, they previously were. Previously, you obviously would only be able to use a repair kit once, so you might as well be using a large repair kit and be able to repair both things at the same time. And in this situation, that would mean that I would be able to play the remainder of the game with uh, a working engine as well. However, now with the current system, I just have to, I can use the small repair kit on my track, get myself into safety, and hopefully then avoid the combat or just use my vehicle at 50% engine capacity, I guess, uh, for another 90 seconds to be able to then play again. So top marks to Wargaming for the, uh, the rechargeable consumables. Uh, the only problem is that obviously with the amount of splash coming from artillery, that you're using consumables way more often. But I do find I'm using less, pre less premium repair kits and less premium med kits and getting less frustrated when uh, something does break. But on the other hand, one thing that I've really noticed, and especially when I'm playing in my light tanks, that later on in the battle, you can't have that glorious situation where you re-track a heavy and he's already used his repair kit and then be able to dance around him. And that's something that is rather annoying, I guess, is that really to all intents and purposes, you have to consider that the enemy's repair kit is going to have been recharged and he's going to be at maximum capacity to be able to engage you. And especially vehicles that have been heavily damaged towards the end of the game. They're no longer going to have either damaged ammo racks, damaged guns, they're not going to have damaged engines, so it's not going to be so easy to be able to to pick apart the wounded tanks towards the end. Now, now that I've finished talking about that, we have got quite a tricky situation on this game. Uh, I've managed to pick up 3,800 damage, 3 kills, that's great for a tier 9 light tank, that would be pretty darn good for a tier 10 light tank. Oh, that Udez, we track him in place. His terrible side armor, not able to be able to ricochet the shot, and I do fire another one blind, but we're unable to hit him and take him down. I must give a big shout out to the T28 prototype and the Udez on the enemy team. They're in a tier 9 game here, and they've already picked up 8 kills between them. Sure, they're not going to be able to quite get a crucial, but unless I manage to kill them, they are going to be getting that Brothers in Arms medal. So I extend my view range, I spot the WTR Panzer IV, he doesn't, me doesn't manage to see me, and I'm going to wait for as long as possible to be able to put a shot into him. And then will I get spotted? Yes I do! Okay, quickly get myself in cover from the Udes who's likely to either be on top of the hill or behind that ridge. Yeah, I'm okay, good. Haven't died yet. Now one thing I don't quite like about uh, the teamwork that I'm going to have with the T30 in this game is that he's falling so far back. And so, even though he's on full hit points right now, he, he could easily be at the front. He could be holding that position that you saw me being there. To be able to get some pressure on the Udez, to proxy spot him, to work the ridge line, see how it goes. Oh, absolute disaster! That's one thing that they've made worse about this tank that I must mention, is the accuracy is now 0.42. Sorry, not... yeah, yeah, 0.42. So, that makes it very, very tricky to be able to engage your opponents effectively at mid to long ranges. Whereas previously, I believe the accuracy was 0.38, which was bad enough as it is. The high tier light tanks and even many of the mid tier light tanks are now exceptionally poor at sniping at long ranges unless of course you're shooting at very soft big targets but we don't have that many more of those in the game. Now the WT Alpha 100 is gone. Rest in peace that absolute OP 6 round Tiger gun hey guys. Wait a minute, am I right in thinking that they actually removed one of the six rounds to five rounds uh, for the last six months of its existence, I believe? You have to go watch my video on that. I have got a video entitled why the WT-Alpha 100 was removed. 
Anyway, I'm getting getting ahead of myself here. Unfortunately, the T-30 is finding out that if you fall all the way to the back of the map in a tank with not very good view range and not very good camo rating, that the sneaky tank destroyers are going to be able to pick you apart. And I can't really afford to get that far forwards for him to be able to spot for him. He should have sat in this location here. He should have protected that ridge and I would have been able to snipe back here, stop them from getting into the base and from being able to trundle around this corner. And we would have been in a much better position. However, seeing how he did fall to the back of the map and now he's just being absolutely picked apart by tank destroyers that are two tiers lower than him, I have to try and take matters into my own hands and go after the enemy team. Firstly, a shot into the T-28 prototype. First one goes in, 271 damage. Will I manage to penetrate my second one? I think I've got a shot in his side armor. Oh, it doesn't quite manage to go in. Now I've run out of standard APCR rounds, having done 4,600 damage this game, and we're going to have to be firing premium APCR rounds that I do keep in this vehicle in case you have to take on some super heavy targets when you get into your tier 10 matchups. Luckily, the UDES misses me, and I am in a very tricky situation here. Where's the IS-3 going to be? Is the UDES going to pop over the ridge? Will the T-28 prototype be driving towards me? That will, that's what I was really worried about right now, that the T-28 prototype is driving towards me, the T-30 might not be able to spot him, and then I'll get double teamed by the UDES and the T-28 prototype. It's very clear that either the IS-3 or the WT Alpha Panzer IV on the enemy team has now entered the cap circle. And so what I want to do is keep using my mobility. I want to be able to get around. I've got to get back, defend that cap. And unfortunately, the T-30 falls to the UDES, taken pretty much completely out, I believe. But he does say sorry in the chat that he was a stock tank. That's rather unfortunate. He's probably using the 120mm on that, on that vehicle. But the 120mm actually has far higher DPM than the 155 You just don't have that big alpha damage hit. So I get spotted by the IS-3 trying to make my way back towards the cap to be able to defend and unfortunately in this position there's no way to sneak around and then be able to go up that slope. So I'm just going to have to fight in this position. So I get spotted. The UDES comes up. Oh, that was such an important shell to put in. I've got 47 seconds left to try and handle this one versus four situation. Four kills in the game now, 4,600 damage dealt. I need this IS-3 to miss. He could probably fire a high explosive round at me to be able to get me. I could probably fire a high explosive round at him to get him. Oh, he's missed. Okay, let's go all in. Even if the T-28 prototype is here, it doesn't really matter. I've just got to do this with 25 seconds left on the game. All right, where was the T-28 prototype last spotted? Probably behind this building. I swing to the right. Hopefully I'm not spotted. Come round the left. Hot shot him right in there. Now we've got 15 seconds and I have a split decision. Do I want to go left to be able to get to the position there and to be able to spot across on? Do I have time for that? I feel like I need to swing right to be able to spot the tank that's going to be right round the corner here. But he's not. Where is he? Oh, come on. No, he's... Oh, absolute disaster. Even though I put a round into him at the end of the game, he managed to fully cap out. And I did not expect for the WT Alpha Panzer IV to be sitting all the way in the corner there. But in retrospect, it was a pretty much a 50-50 situation. Most people, I feel, will be in this location here. If they situate themselves in that location, they've got the rock to be able to hide behind, they've got this ridge to hide behind from people who engage them up in that location. But I guess he thought that I was gonna go up there where I shot him originally from. And so unfortunately, I end up with a bit of a heartbreak at the end of this game, but it was still a cracking round of World of Tanks. So despite this heartbreaking defeat at the end of the game, I was still happy to be able to pick up the Ace Tank of 1,331 experience, and then we get Courageous Resistance, 768 extra, 2,099. I'm kind of surprised that is an ace tanker in a T-54 lightweight in retrospect. 5,000 damage dealt here. Top gun for our six kills. This vehicle does feel really fun at tier 9, and I think it's way, way better than the WZ-132A personally. And I certainly do recommend this as one of the most fun light tanks in the game. It kind of has a medium armor, but doesn't sacrifice any of that light tank mobility. And so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. I'd really appreciate it. And also, I'd like to announce that I have a slightly controversial gold foil t-shirt that is available for one week only on my Teespring store. And so if you want to help support me and get something, at least in my opinion, pretty cool at 
at the same time, you're more than welcome. It's available in unisex, also a scoop neck for all you lovely ladies out there. And I'd also like to highlight that it is available in man sizes from the main store, going all the way up to 5XL for my biggest bands. And you can find a link in the top right hand corner of your screen and the more info icon. I'll pin a comment down below. And also I'd like to give a massive thank you to all of you who left a comment on my video from yesterday. There are 8,000 comments and one of the reasons why this video is going to be going out slightly later today and I'm going to have to start streaming a little later is because I can't stop reading all of them. All of your feedback, the positivity, your constructive thoughts have really been a silver lining on this complete cloud of a weekend. And it's amazingly empowering to feel that so many of you out there care and you've got my back. You're always surprising me. Thank you so much.